Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here at St. Stephen Baptist Church. I'm at the studio of uh, our TV network, SSC Live TV. And I'm glad that you've joined us for another powerful point to ponder. We've launched out this the first week uh, of 2021, Meaningful Moments with the Master, talking about a man named Caleb who had the can-do attitude. Unfortunately, he had to domicile with 10 other people who have the can't do attitude. And when, it, when, when the challenge of entering into the promised land was before them, uh, the can't do attitude people said, no, we can't do it because they're giants in the land and they're bigger than us. Caleb, who had a can do attitude said, yeah, they're giants in the land, but they're bigger than us, but they're not bigger than God. So uh, Caleb, is allowed to go into the promised land because he had faith. The 10 spies along with the entire nation, including Moses, did not enter into the promised land because of the absence of faith. One of the ways in which you can separate <clears throat> Caleb from the other 10 spies is that Caleb had dreams. He had a dream. He had dreams of getting into the promised land. And he believed because God was on the throne that no dream is too extreme. And while Caleb had dreams, the 10 others had dreads. What characterizes your thinking, your vision for your life, all the great things that God has put before you to do? Is it dreams like Caleb or is it dreads like the 10 spies? My hope is that, that you'll move from, in 2021, from dreads to dreams. Look at the two. Look at Numbers 13 again, verses 30 and 31. Look at what it says. Caleb silenced the people who were complaining against Moses and said, we should attack now and take the land. We are strong enough to conquer it. Let's take it. I got a dream. But the men who had gone with Caleb said, no, we are not strong enough to attack it. Attack them. They have dreads. And, and um, both, by the way, were right. Caleb was right, the 10 spies were right, because whatever you believe about what you can do, it's, it's true. It's true, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. God wants us to have more dreams, amen, and less dreads. What is a dream? A dream is a mental blueprint of a preferable future, fueled by the belief that what should be, can be, through the power of God. Let me say that again. It's a mental blueprint. You got to see it in your mind first. A mental blueprint of a preferable future, which means I don't like the life I'm living. This is the future I prefer. I don't like my present situation. Here's the future I prefer. I got a mental blueprint of a preferable, preferable future. And this future, the possibility of this future is being fueled by my faith in God so that what should be in my life actually can be in my life. That's what a dream is. Then when it comes to your dream, you have to take responsibility for your dream. You have, which is to say, you have to want it. It doesn't matter what other people want or what other people think. You have got to want it. And not only must you want it, that preferable future, Caleb, it meant going into the promised land and having some land for his family. You have to want it, but you have to take responsibility for it. Look at Proverbs chapter 13, verse 12. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when dreams come true at last, there is a life of joy. <laughs> when dreams come true, there is a life of joy. You want to have a life of joy? then let God allow your dream to come true. But how can God allow your dream to come true if you first don't have a dream that God can bless to come true? And, and God wants the dream to be big. Now unto him who was able. Remember the benedictions we talked about last week and that benediction in, in, in what uh, Galatians chapter 3, verse 20? Now unto him who was able to do exceedingly abundantly more than you're able to ask or think. Be careful how you dream. Because the size of your dream determines the size of your life. My God, 
that, that's so important. The size of your dream determines the size of your life. Now, while some people have dreams, other people have dreads. It can't happen. All that's going to happen to me is negative stuff. Now, here's the problem with people who have dreads. Listen very carefully. When you have dreams, and when you don't have dreams and you have dreads, what you dread, it's almost like you are bringing the dreads into your life. It's almost like it's a magnet that you bring into your life when you start dreading things. It actually happens. Num I mean, excuse me, Job chapter 3 and verse 25 says, What I feared has come upon me. What I dreaded has happened to me. Which means you constantly dread certain things and focus on those things. It's like a magnet. You bring things into your life. Now, whenever you dream, like Caleb was dreaming, there are people who will say, that's impossible. Let me give you a good definition of impossible. The impossible is something nobody could do until somebody does it. Let me say that again. The impossible is that which nobody can do until somebody does it which proves that what we thought was impossible was really, impo was really possible, but it did not happen because of the absence of faith. I love this poem. I once heard it. I want to give it to you. It's a great poem which kind of highlights what I'm talking about. It reads, there was a cautious man who never laughed or played. He never risked, he never tried, he never sang or, play, or prayed. And when he one day passed away, his insurance was denied, for since he never lived, they claim he never died. He never lived because he was too cautious, and you cannot truly live if you're cautious in your comfort zone. You know, uh, and I'm dating myself now. Back in the 60s, they used to have on television the old Mission Impossible, the Mission Impossible uh, 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 TV program. And it would always open the same way. And uh, Peter, Peter Phelps, I think it was his name, Peter Phelps, would always get a tape recorded message, and then they would give him his mission if he decided to accept it. And uh, it was always some mission that called for faith. And then after the mission was, the mission was communicated uh, to uh, Peter Phelps, then the tape recorder would self-destruct. But before the tape recorder self-destructed, there was always a disclaimer. And the disclaimer was, uh, uh, if you are caught or killed, the State Department will disavow any knowledge of you. Well, listen, my brothers and sisters, God's not going to send you a tape recorder that's uh, going to self-destruct. God's going to put something in your spirit, and God's going to say to you, like he said to Caleb, go get that land. And when God puts that in your spirit, you dream. Move away from people who have dreads. You dream. And remember, Mission Possible says that if you get caught or killed, the State Department will disavow any knowledge of you. Listen, brothers and sisters, the good news about what about God is that when we fail in the mission that everybody says is impossible, when you fail, I can tell you from personal experience that God will never disavow you. That God will pick you up and say, you know what, let's try again. And many of us, perhaps we're not dreaming because uh, we have failed in the past. And because of our failures, whatever those failures may be, you think God has disavowed you. God will not disavow you in this, the first week of January. Have the Caleb spirit. Get up. Dream a big dream, never forgetting that the impossible is something 
nobody can do until somebody has done it. Let's trust God. Let's move from dreads to dreams in 2021. Let's pray together. Heavenly Fathers, get this word deep in our hearts. Help us to become Caleb's. Give us the Caleb spirit. Forgive us of the dreads because those dreads we dread, we, like a magnet, draw them into our lives. Give us big dreams, bold dreams, I pray. Thank you that you're not like the Mission Impossible television program. You will never disavow us. You always the God of grace. Help us to take advantage of that grace, to believe in that grace and move back off the sidelines of life and get back into the game of life. We've been depressed too long, defeated too long. We claim 2021 as a year of increase, a year of blessings and opportunities, not for ourselves, but for your glory and others' goods to make our world more humane and more just. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you for being with us. Before I let you go, uh, if you don't have a church home, listen, everybody needs a church home. And I'd like to invite you to consider becoming a part of St. Stephen Baptist Church. Contact us here at St. Stephen Baptist Church. Say, I want to be a digital disciple. Regardless of where you are around the world, contact us. Uh, and you can email us here at St. Stephen's uh, at uh, newstart at ssclive.org. God bless you. In closing, don't forget what we say every day during COVID-19, and that is to stay safe, stay sane, and if you can, stay home. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.